We've had two major projects in the past 10 years, uh, both of which addressing a lot of building envelope needs, going into the arts and music and our athletic facilities. East is very well known for our music program and I think a better facility has even bettered that reputation. It just adds a whole new other element to being in high school and playing sports because now you don't have to really worry about the elements. These projects are really important for our school because they do create a sense of pride for our students, for our community, and it's something that attracts people to our school and our district. We've made a lot of improvements and that cycle has to continue, so that's why we feel we're in a good position at this point to offer this next capital project that will move us forward to the, to the next level. We do have a large population and currently um, all of our classroom teaching space is taken up. Over the past few years we have some new programs that we've had. We have a new science lab here, we have an ENL population that we need class space for, and all of that is affecting our space issues here at Lindbergh Elementary. We have three schools that will be receiving new classroom space. That's Edison Elementary, Lindbergh Elementary, and Hoover Elementary. Rather than opening a, another building that we own, it's much more cost effective to the taxpayer to add on a few classrooms to our existing buildings than to open an entirely new facility and staff that. We feel that is a very economical and taxpayer friendly way to right size those buildings for the foreseeable future. So Kemmer West has those amazing facilities and I think it's probably super beneficial to their programs that they're right there at school. The fact is the students at Kenmore East see what has happened over at Kenmore West and they want to have their share of the upgraded facilities. Right now we're operating on fields that are not always safe or ideal. Kenmore East doesn't have a baseball field that they can really play on consistently so we find ourselves often sharing the field with East which, I mean, they're our school rival and we still let them use the field and all, but it's kind of frustrating because it obstructs our practices. Between Kemmer East and Kemmer West, we have upwards of 50 varsity programs, plus a lot more junior varsity and modified teams. Uh, our ability to use the same facility without lighting is nearly impossible. The investment in the turf is uh, important and it's justifiable. It's uh, consistency of play, it's safety, it's cost, relative to maintenance. In our last capital project, we had the opportunity to install a state-of-the-art turf field on campus at Kenmore West. And with this current project, we're looking to do something very similarly at Kenmore East. The other uh, advantage is of the community use as well. We have two soccer associations in Kenmore. We have two football associations in Kenmore. We have a lot of outside groups that use and access our fields. Well, one of the big items that's being addressed in this new capital project is the old gymnasium. It was the original gymnasium when the school was built in 1939, and it hasn't changed since. We're renovating a number of gyms throughout the district, particularly in our middle schools. So there'll be resurfacing of, of playing surfaces and replacement of a lot of equipment, again, to upgrade them to today's standards. When these schools were originally constructed, they were considered community schools. We had a lot more walkers and a, not a lot of district transportation. But when you fast forward to 2020, we are busing more students than we ever had in the district's history. What I see right now is a very unsafe arrival and dismissal. We have parents parking on both sides of the street. For students, they're in and out of cars, trying to cross the streets to get into the building. We don't have a designated drop-off area for students that are being driven in or walking, um, and that creates traffic hazards on one side of the building. It worries me that somebody's going to get hit crossing the street, um, whether it be a, a kid crossing to get into school or a parent leaving. We've heard our community, and we are planning and designing a portion of this project to alleviate those congested areas in our school. So we're introducing parent drop-off, uh, bus loops, that will get those buses off of the streets. It's become clear that uh, buildings need to improve their security. And one recommendation made by security experts is to uh, employ a single point of entry. 
When these schools were designed 60 years ago, I don't believe single point of entry was ever really a concern. With multiple entryways, potential entryways in our school, it's imperative that we do kind of funnel traffic in a better way and know who is coming in and out of the building. We have uh, someone dedicated to the front foyer that's working for both sides of the building. They have to get up and actually let each and every person in every time uh, that they're coming to the door. Through this project, we are redesigning our single points of entry. Visitors will now be able to come into a secured vestibule area, scan in, and then are permitted into the building. And we feel this offers uh, increased safety and security for our students and staff. A couple years ago, we tested our water supplies in the building, and we were above our acceptable levels of lead in the water. We've done most of the remediation and um, have deemed that the joints and the pipes and the solder and everything used back in the 40s and the 50s was lead containing, which is causing our pipes to be contaminated. So we've been able to put in temporary measures, we've put, put up signage for non-potable water, but through this project we were replacing every single water line, domestic water line, uh, throughout the district. So that's a large portion of this capital project. We have over a thousand students in Kenton that are diagnosed with some sort of disability. The playground is our time to socialize, to be with our friends, to forge those relationships that sustain us throughout our life. So that's really important for children specifically with disabilities because it may be harder for them. There's been an increasing call, and rightly so, for adaptive playgrounds which give special needs kids the opportunity to share the same sorts of experiences other kids do in terms of playground equipment. So we are very committed uh, to placing one, possibly two in the future in the district, but certainly one will be included in this capital project. By working with our administrative team, talking to the community, working with our staff and students, we've packaged a project together that we're proud and excited to present to the community in February of 2020. This capital improvement project is an investment in Kenton's future. It's an investment in the, in the students in our buildings. And when we invest in kids, we invest in the right resource.